a late night encounter turns dangerous. He left with the female, and that was the last that he saw. A mystery that no one can solve. It was almost unbelievable, almost too much like a Hollywood script. Until a psychic sets police on a high-speed chase. Time is of the essence. Do it now, do it quick. And makes history in the process. My name is Rosemary Kerr. We got a family reporting a missing person on uh, 250 Lafayette Court. Send for I'll be around to the location. The man is 27-year-old Andre Daigle, the youngest of seven children in a tight-knit family outside New Orleans. Yeah, last we heard, he was supposed to go out with uh, a friend of his last. Daigle went out with a friend the night before and was never seen again. Andre failed to show up at work that morning. His parents were concerned about his whereabouts. They weren't able to contact him. In a missing persons case, the first 48 hours are critical. Investigators know the clock is ticking. The police department assigns the case to Captain Jim Gallagher. Hello, Nick. He wastes no time running down the only lead they have, the last place Andre Daigle was seen before vanishing. He and his friend Nick Shelley had gone to the lounge, were playing some pool, and uh, during the course of the night, Andre went up to the bar to get a few drinks, and uh, a female seated at the bar struck up a conversation with him. So when they started to leave, that's when uh, this female approached him and asked, and asked for a ride. And Andre, uh, being a single male, you know, said, well, yeah, I'll give you a ride home. Andre and, and the female entered Andre's truck and drove out of the lot. And that was the last Nick or any family member had ever had contact with Andre. It wouldn't be the first time a man met a woman at a bar and didn't come home. There's nothing to indicate that uh, he was taken against his will. In the vast majority of these type cases, uh, within a day or so, the family hears from the individual. But when another day passes without word, Gallagher realizes there may be more to this case than meets the eye. The investigator is determined to find out everything he can about Daigle's new female friend. We wanted to see if anybody knew her or could tell us, yes, she was here or yes, she frequents here, just some connection. Gallagher's in luck. The bartender has a sharp memory and remembers seeing Andre that night. He was talking to a lady that was sitting right here. Would you recognize if you saw her again? Mm -hmm. I left my card with him and said, if you should see her or even think you see her, call us right away and, and we'll come out and, and, and talk to her. All right, guys. We're working on a case involving a missing person, Andre Daigle. Been missing since Tuesday. Need y'all to keep an eye out. The investigation is approaching the crucial 48-hour mark with no word from Andre Daigle. With each passing hour, the odds of finding him alive dwindle. Police launch a massive search for the missing man. And the Daigle family scours the city for any sign of him. They kind of sectioned off the entire New Orleans area and sent people out to different sections, knocking on doors, showing Andre's photo, hoping that someone there would give him some lead. But the search comes up empty. Not one person that they came across knew where he was or had any contact with him. It's as if Andre Daigle has vanished into thin air. It's really frustrating when you devote a lot of time and you, you do a lot of work and nothing is turning up. Daigle's been missing for three days, and police have no idea where to find him. 
Unwilling to wait for answers, the Daigle family decides to open the investigation to someone with unusual abilities, a psychic. Most of my contact with psychics was uh, having a few of them swindling people. And so there was a part of me that said, oh man, this is not gonna be good. But psychic Rosemarie Kerr has helped other police agencies solve some of their toughest cases. I've been working with law enforcement over 30 years. The family sends Kerr a photo of Andre Daigle and a map of the area where he was last seen. When I use a photo of the person, it's called psychometry. And the minute I touch the picture, I feel pain, I feel fear, I feel love. I see things, I hear things, I just automatically know things. The minute I picked up his photo, I knew that something terrible had happened. Andre is in danger, terrible danger. Danger, danger. Does the psychic see danger that the police can't see? When the search for Andre Daigle hits a dead end, his family sends a photo and a map to psychic Rosemarie Kerr. And when she touches the photo, she's struck by a terrifying vision. I felt uh, an urgency that was uh, stronger than any, any urgency I've ever done in a reading. And when she opens the map... I got the chills from one end to the other. The psychic calls the family with an urgent plea. Slidell, do you know this place? I need you to go there now. Time is of the essence. He is in very, very grave danger. Do it now. Do it quick. Though no one in the Daigle family has any connection to the New Orleans suburb of Slidell, Andre's brothers race in that direction. And as they pull off at the Slidell exit, all of a sudden, they pass this black truck. They look over, confirm the license plate number, and they're like, I can't believe it. That, that's Andre's truck. And here it is, you know, in Slidell. I mean, there it is. The psychic has sent them to the right place at exactly the right time. They pull up to the truck, they look over, and they see two strangers, two people they've never seen before. So they take off and, and they end up in a high speed pursuit trying to keep up with it. Andre's brothers flag down a police car and soon officers are in hot pursuit. They're doing 80, 85 miles an hour on the interstate trying to chase them down. Finally, the truck turns onto a dead end and the chase is over. The two individuals in the truck identified themselves as uh, Charles Gervais and Michael Phillips. Well, the police take the two men in, into custody for possession of a stolen truck. Arresting Gervais and Phillips is a big break for police, but it doesn't bring them any closer to finding Andre Daigle. When they were first stopped, uh, the only thing that the police knew for sure was that they were in possession of a stolen vehicle. Gervais and Phillips refused to talk. And without their confession, how can investigators prove they took more from Andre Daigle than just his truck? It was very important that uh, the police department uh, follow up on every lead. 
Investigators process the truck, searching for some evidence of foul play. But the results are disappointing. There was no physical evidence. There was no blood of Andre that would have somehow linked them. Police department. Police search the men's apartment, looking for anything that might lead them to Andre Daigle. But they find nothing. Did the men just steal an abandoned truck? If you don't have evidence and you don't have, you don't have Andre, you really don't have a crime. Sorely lacking clues in this bizarre case, Captain Gallagher turns to the public for help. And right away, he gets a call from the bar where Andre Daigle disappeared with a young woman. Sergeant Gallagher. Yes, Detective Gallagher, she's here. She's in here right now. Are police finally closing in on the mystery woman? And what does she have to do with Andre Daigle's disappearance? The search for Andre Daigle heats up when police get a tip that the mystery woman is back at the bar. Captain Gallagher races over to question her. I approached her and identified myself, and uh, she seemed shocked. There was really nothing that would make you believe that she was capable of crime. The woman maintains she doesn't know Andre, and she wasn't even at the bar the night Andre disappeared. Her story checks out. It's a simple case of mistaken identity and another devastating blow to the investigation. What else can I possibly do? There's got to be something I've missed or something I haven't done yet. What, what can I do to help, you know, bring some relief to this family and find this person? After days of fruitless investigation, Captain Gallagher takes stock. The only movement in the case was finding Andre Daigle's truck. And who led police to that truck? I call the psychic uh, Rosemary Kerr. Can the psychic help investigators one more time? Gallagher takes Kerr to the place where the missing man was last seen. The power in being in the place where the incident happened, I will pick up every vibration from the beginning to the end. I find a person's vibration on any object that they may have touched. You're going right to the essence of the person. Jim, when I pick up this ball, what happens is I'm picking up a vibration, and as soon as I touch any object, the vibration comes in. And as I pick this up, I can feel Andre. into Andre vibration I'm looking through his eyes I'm seeing water a large body of water and also railroad tracks she could see vividly where Andre's at and she describes the location with great detail okay and you mentioned the, the number seven what's the significance the of number that? seven came in significantly the whole time that I was doing the reading it keeps popping up uh, it's very very important in this also has passed 
If the psychic is right, this is no longer a missing persons case. This is murder. I see the two males with Andre. I also see a woman involved, but the males are the ones that have killed him. Okay, and they... Gallagher immediately thinks of his two prime suspects, Michael Phillips and Charles Gervais. Police had already searched the men's apartment, but did they search the wrong one? Charles Gervais, Michael Phillips had been evicted. They moved out, took all their belongings with them. Gallagher rushes to the suspect's prior address. What secrets could this hidden apartment hold? The manager allowed us to go in the apartment, open the door. It's apartment number seven. We step in, and immediately to the right in the living room, here's this big, huge blood stain right in the middle of the living room floor. Something terrible must have happened here, but the only thing more shocking than the crime would be the motive. Let me a crime scene unit. With the help of psychic Rosemary Kerr, police have found an ominous blood stain in Charles Gervais and Michael Phillips' old apartment. When we saw the stain and we saw the, uh, the spatter, it left very little doubt that this is the location. This is where Andre died. We end up cutting out sections of the carpet to get some samples of the blood. And the DNA test confirms it's the blood of Andre Daigle. Suspects Phillips and Gervais are already in jail for stealing Daigle's truck. When Captain Gallagher confronts them with a new blood evidence, a shocking story unfolds. I, I get these two confessions from Michael Phillips and Charles Gervais, and Charles is like, we killed him. We, we beat him, and we dumped his body. Gervais agrees to lead police to Daigle's body gives us directions to the swamp area near Manshack. We drive up and down this road looking for a location. He says, that's it, pull over right there. And there's the interstate sign, big number seven on a green sign. Seven, just like the psychic saw in her vision. And Kerr was able to see even more. Rosemarie told me about the bridge. She told me about the railroad track. She told me there's going to be water all around. We go there, and there's everything she described. I was stunned and amazed. Charles points off in the direction underneath the bridge, and we walk to that location, and here's this box with Andre in it. Got a body. Found Andre's body. And what about the mysterious woman? Charles Gervais and Michael Phillips provided the name Thelma Horn. Then the two men explain why they killed Andre Daigle. The plan was ultimately for the three of them to join the mafia. They thought that to do so, they might need to kill somebody they would send out Thelma to bar rooms in hopes of luring back a man to their apartment, whereupon they would then kill that individual to show that they had the nerve to do that. Daigle, a total stranger, was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Three of them were indicted for first-degree murder. And in an unprecedented move, Rosemary Kerr takes the stand at trial. Rosemary was the first psychic to ever testify in a criminal trial. You swear this testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole Prosecutors truth. Prosecutors decided that it was very important to have Rosemary here to testify because she led directly to the killers. You can't dispute that. That that is fact. This is what happened. And the jury agrees. All three were ultimately convicted and are currently serving uh, life sentences without possibility of parole. 
I'm not the one that solves the cases. I am just a channel. If the family did not go where they needed to be right away, if Captain Gallagher didn't do his work on the murderers, and if W.J. didn't do his job in the courthouse, it wouldn't have worked. We work as a team. I was a skeptic prior to this case, but uh, there's no, no doubt in my mind that uh, Rosemarie has a gift.